Well guys, we're, I'm out here in the middle of this field and this is a this is a rough field. This is a rank field. I, there's not a whole lot you can do with this. This field is, is not being kept. Nobody has put out any effort to clean it, to maintain it, to make it productive, I guess you'd say, or to, to make it uh, of any quality. It's just kind of been left to the weeds and the, the sapling bushes and the, the junk that grows and comes in our lives, you know. But there is opportunity. This is some old volunteer ride that pops up and, and it's some pretty good grass that's growing and, and in, in all this mess there is good there's potential this ground's got good potential everybody's got potential i want to take you now to a place over right down the road a buddy of mine that he tends to his place right and he maximizes all of his land his he grows the best hay in the county but if he quit doing what he does and if he didn't care if he didn't put forth that effort his place would look just like this in a matter of time Boy, this old hay field's usually way thicker. You can see the ground. It's a dry year. That's what, what the deal is. It's so dry. A lot of grasshoppers, too. When grass, when it's dry like this, them grasshoppers just seem like they just are starving and they chew your grass up big time. <clears throat> this, ha this grass is probably right at 28 days old, which means 28 days ago they spread fertilizer on it to get it to grow as much as to, to maximize it. Quality, quantity, we just hadn't had the rain to support it. Without rain and God's blessings with rain, everything in East Texas kind of goes to a halt. We're way behind in our rainfall this, this spring. Well, Mr. Galen, you know it's extremely dry this spring. How's that affecting your hay baling so far? Well, we're cutting half, at least in half. We, we're not getting but about a roll to acre or less in some spots. Mm. And uh, it's gonna be a pretty tough summer if we don't get a little moisture. What, uh, are you still, do you, do you let it grow longer or are you still cutting it like, you know, 28 days where it's at its most protein or? Well, I'm kind of watching how it's growing. It, it, it gets to a certain point and it kind of stops growing. Mm -hmm. it, uh, starts to head out and then it stops growing. Well, you might as well go ahead and cut it right. and get it off and, and hope you're gonna get a little bit of moisture for your next cut. What's, what do you do, you know, like say now, you, I mean, this clean, this field is clean and it's, I mean, it's it's pretty, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's like a yard. What's your next step? You come right back behind it with more fertilizer and well, if we're fortunate enough to get a little rain, yes, I'll come back with some fertilizer. And uh, you about have to in this part of the country. We gotta, we gotta use some fertilizer to grow grass. You know, hay matters are a lot like people's lives. If you really just look at it and you really study the Bible, he talks about in the Bible how how the, Jesus taught the parable of the weeds growing with the weed, and 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 he said, don't just let them grow and at the harvest we'll sort them out that's kind of what you're talking about the difference in hay fields is some folks you know they got some weeds in their fields and you just leave them alone once you cut and roll your hay whenever you feed it to them cattle it sorts itself out them cattle eat the grass and leave the weeds leave the weeds Galen, Mr. Galen, has, he's got some of the best hay. He's won the hay show in our county probably the last two years. He takes a lot of pride, puts a lot of effort into clean, good, high quality hay. His cattle are, are good, he, he, he is blessed, he takes care of this place, takes a lot of work. He um, manages it. That's a lot like life, guys. If we manage our lives, we can maintain a high quality life. If we just let life run wild and life begins up managing us, we get a lot of weeds in our hay, feathers, hay meadows. The thing is, if uh, just like bailing this old field, if you just let God come into your life and you ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior, to forgive you and cleanse you of all your sins, it's just like this hay meadow. He'll come in there and cut everything down. He cuts it, lays it on the ground, sins, grass, good, bad, and ugly. Let it cure. Then you come in there and roll it up and that hay field is clean and I mean it's clean, clean. Nothing prettier than a than a good clean cut, fresh cut hay field. The beautiful thing is 
you stack all that mess up. Once you roll that hay and you stack it in the barn or stack it in the hay pen, <clears throat> when you go to feed it, God will use everything for something. Even the mistakes I've made in my life, even the sins and the weeds that I've had in my fields, in my own personal life, i found that, that as, as I allowed God to, to use my mistakes, He's glorified. It's the same thing with this hay meadow. Them old cattle, they'll eat that old rank hay. They'll, eat all, they'll get all they can out of it. Once left to be just a bunch of junk. There's a bunch of junk in my life that's just pretty much left, but, but God's using a lot of it to feed people and to feed His Word and to scatter His Word. And I just hope, you know, you kind of take this little old deal and think about this hay meadow and realize, I don't care if you're hay meadow, if your life has got weeds in it, it's got tall, rough, rough, hard country, rank looking grass, or if it's got good, fresh, high quality, high fertilized, high protein, quality type life. No matter which one of them you're in, life's like a hay field. It's like a hay meadow. If you'll ask the Lord to come in and clean it and cut it and remove your sins and forgive you, <clears throat> he'll do that and he'll clean this hay field up. And then if you'll stack it and allow him to use it when he needs it, somebody will get fed off of what you've done. If we put forth the effort and the energy to, to read God's Word, to stay in His Word, to surrender to the Holy Spirit, to allow God to use us, to, to, to grow us, and, and to pour that prayer life and that relationship with Jesus Christ into us, we become of high quality and we can be, we can be very productive. But when we don't, we just don't utilize it. We don't put forth the effort. We don't work hard at it. We end up just like this old field with a bunch of weeds and grown up junk in our lives that ain't worth having. Thank you. Take care.